On the Mayfly bench, a Princeton Reverb custom build. particular build, there were some requirements up front. First is the person who wanted this build wants something very small, very light, could still gig with it, had to be really, really quiet, and in their perfect world, they could use it without pedals. And what I mean by that is they wanted to control the amount of overdrive produced by the amplifier with just the volume control on the guitar. Master volume is important, tremolo was not. So it gives us some flexibility to build stuff. Let's have a look. There are some obvious changes and some subtle changes to, uh, to the circuit itself. The first is the tremolo is gone, as you guys can see. This is a fairly standard uh, Fender input circuit and a fairly standard Fender reverb circuit. What gets a little crazy is back in this direction. There's a master volume. It's a cathodyne phase splitter. This is the tube that would be normally used for the tremolo. Now I'm using in this case, just right after the reverb recovery amplifier to drive the rest of the amp. Now the main thing about eliminating noise is handling your grounds properly. I want control over every single ground. I'm isolating everything from the chass and I am routing all the grounds independently. Now the scheme that I've chosen to use is a distributed star ground. So for example, if we're looking at the input stage, I've got this ground called EG here. Now everything that's associated with this tube gets ground to that point, and then EG gets grounded to its associated capacitor and then to the chass ground at a star point. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm changing critical resistance values, particularly these two right here. Normally these would be 68K. This is the first resistor that the signal hits when going to the amplifier. And the problem with a fairly large value resistor like that is that it injects a lot of hiss, a lot of Johnson noise. If you lower the value, then you can help reduce that Johnson noise. So I chose 22K because when they're combined in parallel like this, when you plug into something into jack number one here, you get 10K that puts it well below the AM radio band and should filter out all that junk, but still not have a lot of hiss. The other thing that I intend to do is use high wattage resistors for these 100K plate resistors. Everything else is going to be handled with wire dress. Speaking of wire dress, instead of using a Fender style heater run, I'm going to use a Marshall style one. The idea is that the chass in this corner here gives it a little bit of shielding, so hopefully the rest of the circuit won't pick it up as much. It was a pain, but hopefully it'll be worth it. When you look at the wiring diagram that I've designed for this amplifier, a few other things become apparent. The first thing is that I'm using something called a humdinger. This goes into the heater wirings and it allows me to control the balance between the two heater lines. Now normally you would just use a hundred uh, ohm resistor to ground on each leg. This gives me the ability to just tweak it just right, just in case there's any discrepancies in the windings inside the power transformer itself. Now this is typically the spot where you'd normally have the driver for the reverb output. Now that driver is essentially a little mini power amplifier, and that creates a lot of heavy currents and a lot of heavy noise. And I thought it was always kind of dumb in Fender's design to have it right here, right in the middle of the preamp. So what I did is I moved it over there. The reverb return goes right into this tube here, but I want to point out where this ground goes. It's grounded to my localized star point, EG. Princeton reverbs are notorious for a certain kind of distortion called blocking distortion. It's not a very musical distortion. The biggest problem with that is a cathodyne phase splitter right here. It works fine within its design parameters, but when you push it hard, weird things start happening. If you push it to the point where these output tubes start uh, distorting, the input resistance of this tube goes from a very high value to a suddenly very low value. And that screws up the differential impedance that this guy actually sees. The way you handle that is to get rid of blocking distortion on this end. And what I've done is I've jacked up my grid stopper resistors to 68K. If these guys do go into saturation, it won't affect this part of the circuit. Similar grid stoppers all the way back. Essentially, I'm trying to remove blocking distortion by the insertion of grid stoppers. So this is a stock uh, Princeton Reverb Eyelet board. 
This is the one that I've designed and made to replace it. This particular material is a vulcanized paper, which uh, it's the first time I've used this. Uh, hopefully it works well. I will say that it cuts well and it drills well, and you can write on it. So you can write things like the various ground points and the various power supply nodes. Okay, let's stuff these boards. Let's have a closer look at this board before we go on. So as you can see, we have the standard issue fender style power distribution and that the hot nets are going down the middle of the board. What's different is that the filtering capacitors for each stage are located right at the point of use. For example, here is power supply net E, the caps right there, and these are the plate resistors for that stage right at that point. All of the localized star points are also terminated at the end of the other end of that capacitor. So I have a localized star here for this power supply net, and I have another localized star over here for this power supply net. We're back. The amplifier is wired and it's up and running, and I will say it's quieter than I expected it to be. It's really, really quiet. Even with everything dimed, it's, you're hard pressed to know that the thing is actually turned on. I'm very happy with the noise performance. Now I'm gonna walk through some features of the amplifier. Uh, first, normal controls up to these two. This is a master volume control, and this one? Well, I've got some ideas for that, and maybe that'll be in a future video. Now, we'll point out that every single jack in the amplifier is isolated from the chassis, and so they have to be grounded independently. And what I did is every jack is grounded to its associated star ground. The driver for the uh, reverb tank is over here, away from all the uh, sensitive input circuitry over here. There's lots of grid stoppers. Other things for uh, bias adjustment, I've got one ohm resistors just on the grounds of the power tubes with separate uh, bias controls for each tube. All associated paired signals are twisted together as tight as I possibly could. Even the power connectors, which are run right up here, through the switch to the fuse from the input jack and ultimately to the transformer. Same with the heater supplies. Same, of course, with the rectifier heater and, of course, with the high tension. Well, the amplifier is all done and it met its design criteria of being very quiet and also being able to control the amount of overdrive with just the volume control on the guitar. But I don't like the sound of the overdrive typical guitars. It's got too much bass, it's too fuzzy. It's time to tune the circuit. I was gonna think about what to put in this little hole here. To help us with uh, tuning the circuit, we're going to use some substitution boxes. The idea is you wire them in to replace a particular component and you can adjust the value of that component until it's something that sounds good to you. We're going to start with the cathode bypass capacitor of the first stage. I think we have a winner with 0.47 microfarads. Now we're tuning other parts of the circuit, in particular gain, of the last two final gain stages of the amplifier. cathode capacitors, cathode resistors, bypass capacitors, grid stopper resistors, and grid leak resistors. I think the amp is as tuned as it's going to get. The amp is complete. Just going to run over some of the features of this amplifier. 
output transformer and power transformer from a deluxe reverb for 22 full watts. Master volume. Mystery accessory expansion hole. Tremolo has been removed. The extra gain stage has been used as a gain stage in the signal path for more overdrive. Overdrive has been tuned so that you can have full overdrive with the volume of the guitar all the way up, backing off for a clean sound. Push-pull bright switch. Impedance selector on the back. Feedback selector switch, either stock, less than stock, or not. Low noise design with special heater windings, hum dinger, and a distributed star ground. Hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more on Mayfly on the Bench.